Come on, shout Hosanna. Hosanna means save us. Literally means Savior or save us. Jesus was coming in to the city. And when they were waving their palm trees, they were saying, save us. Be the Savior that we're hoping for. How many of you found Jesus and he was the exact Savior that you were hoping for? You know, you tried a lot of things. You tried a lot of girlfriends and boyfriends. They weren't what you were hoping for. <laughs> Maybe you put your hope in some people, but people always fail you. There's not one person in this world that will not fail in some way because we're all flawed. But Jesus is the Savior you're hoping for. He's the God you're hoping for. He's always there for you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Hosanna is what they call a praise. In the Jewish culture, Hosanna was what they were saying. But every time you offer a thanksgiving now in Jewish culture, they say, offer up a Hosanna. Every time you offer up a praise, we're offering up Hosannas. And just for one minute, I'd like to open up with our mouths offering up some Hosannas right now. If you would, in your seat right now, lift your hands and begin to just thank God that you're here today, that your kids are in kids' world today, that you have a family that serves the Lord, that the family that's not here yet will be here in the building, that this is a time and a season for you to thank God. Right now, let's just thank him right now where you're at. Just thank him for everything you have. Thank you for how God has shown up. Thank you for what Jesus has done for you in every single arena, in every single place, your family, your work. Just thank him for the people that are in your life right now. The people that are in your life right now. Thank him for the marriage that has not fallen apart. Thank you for the marriage that he's still working on. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus. In the highest place today, we just welcome you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. This is a day to celebrate and praise you. This is not a day to conceal your praise. This is not a day to be silent about what you're grateful for. This is not a day to be silent about what you're grateful for. This is a day that we praise God for all he's done, for the fact that you have him here in your life, for the fact that you're not going to hell, for the fact that your family is being saved, for the fact that you are not where you used to be. There are things that you should be giving God praise for because he's worthy of a Hosanna. Genesis 12, 1 through 3 is where we're going. Stay with me a little bit longer, Jeremiah. Verses 6 through 8. If I could get some uh, microphone and the speakers up here, that'd be great. And then Leviticus chapter 23, 40 through 41. I'm going to read in two places and then we're going to explain this. But the presence of the Lord is already here. So this service is a success. Jesus is here. Genesis 12, 1 through 3, 6 through 8. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country, leave your relatives, leave your father's family, go to the land that I will show you, because I'm going to make you a great nation. I will bless you, make you famous, you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you, I will curse those who treat you. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram traveled through all the land as far as Shechem. There he set up camp at Oak Memorial. At that time, the area was inhabited by the Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I give you this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord who had appeared to him. After that, Abram traveled south and set up camp in the hill country with Bethel on one side to the west and Ai on one side to the east. Two different cities. He builds an altar in the middle. There he built another altar and he worshiped God. Go to Leviticus 23, verses 40 through 41. On the first day, this is Moses speaking to the Israelites. Estimated 2.8 to 3.1 million people. And he's speaking commands. 
He says, on the first day, I want you to take seven days and I want you to lift up and gather palm branches from leafy trees. Then I want you to gather willows that grow by the streams. And I want you to celebrate before the Lord your God for seven days. I want you to praise me with the palms in one hand and with the willows in the other. You must observe the Lord this festival for seven days every year. And this is to be a permanent law for you. It must be observed by the appointed month from generation to generation. This is a law you must keep. This is something that you must go on doing forever. We praise you, Lord, right now for the word. Speak to us in this time that we have in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Jeremiah. When Jesus came in on the donkey, he was coming in and they were putting down palm branches before him. Remember that these people did not yet have the New Testament. It was not written yet. They had the, the law, the Levitical law. And they were doing it based on this story from Moses of when he asked the children of Israel to get palm branches. And I want you for seven days to begin to praise me with the palm branches. Put up that palm tree real quick. Palm trees are amazing. They grow tall. They're strong trees. They represent strength. The palm branches come off of the tree. They extend. Some of them get very, very long. They grow very, very long. God calls you a palm tree. Did you know that? Psalm 92, verse 12, those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of their God like palm trees. God calls you a palm tree. Let me tell you three things about palm trees real quick. Number one, because you should know this because God calls you one. Number one, a palm tree will bend. The hurricanes can come, weather can come, wind can come, storms will come, and they will bend over, but they will not break and snap. You see, there are things that are coming your direction. When you try to stand for God, there's a resistance. There's maybe things coming against you right now and your family, whatever it might be. But as a believer and a child of God, he made you with something that even though you're bowing over, he wants you to bow to God and humble yourself, get on your knees and pray. But after the storm is over, you were made to bounce back. You were made to bounce back. I understand you fell, but you were made to bounce back. I understand you messed up. It hurt a lot of people. We've all made mistakes that we've regretted, but God is the way and the way that he is is he says, you're a palm tree. I don't want you to stay in your regret. I don't want you to stay in your shame. I don't want you to stay in your guilt. I need you to go ahead and get back up. I can move on with you. The fact that you're in this building, many of you, was because you bounced back. You haven't given up yet. Number two, you can cut all the branches. Put that palm tree back up. You can cut all of the branches around the palm tree. These long branches, part of its beauty. You can cut those all down, but it will not die. You see, there are words in this whole statement of sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me is a lie. Of course words hurt. Some of y'all have had curses been brought to you by your own family members, your own mother, your own father. Some of y'all had to go through holy waters two, three times just to get healed from the words that have been spoken over you. But God wants you to know, Psalm 91, even though the arrow that flies by day, the pestilence that comes by night, a thousand could fall on my left, 10,000 on my right, but it won't come near you. Then what's the arrow? The arrow that flies by day are the words that come your direction. But there is a shield of faith that we have. A shield of faith that we have that quenches the fiery darts of the evil one. They didn't mean to be used by Satan, but they were used by the devil. But if you know what God has said, if you have a shield that's in front of you, if you have the word of God and what he thinks about you, realize it might still hurt, but you're not out of the fight. Don't let the word stop you. Don't let their hate stop you. Don't give in. Number three thing about a palm tree. 
is a palm tree is significant because of how many roots it has. The palm tree has this huge containment unit and there are thousands of roots, little tiny roots that take root and hold up these giant massive trees. God is saying that all of the moments you have in my presence become a root. Every time that I give you a revelation in my word, it's a root. Every time that I get to speak with you, you take a walk with me. You see, God is into secrets, but God can't keep a secret. What do you mean? Well, it's impossible for God to keep a secret. He says, whatever you do when you pray, go into your closet, close the door, and your Father who sees what's in secret will reward you in the open. You see, God can't keep a secret. What God wants secrets with you this year. God wants moments you go for a walk. You didn't tell nobody about, but I'm just going to go have a secret time with God right now. God wants you to take a drive, and instead of taking that same exit, why don't you drive one more exit, take a left and go on a dirt road, and just start praising God for a little bit. God wants some roots to be formed inside of your life. Colossians 3 says, let your roots go down deep into Jesus. Why? Because he knows the life you live in. He knows the family that you still have. He knows the people that are coming against you. And he says, but all of these moments formed another root. You're not going to be detached. You won't be taken out of church. You're not going to go back to the streets. You're not going back to what you used to be. You don't look like that anymore. Because every moment, every divine moment forms an attachment of a root. Now, he says to Moses, says, I want you to take these palm branches, these strong, beautiful branches, the moments that God showed up right when you asked. You prayed for healing and it happened. You're healed. You asked your child, Lord, God, would you help them where they're at? And God showed up and he helped your child. Your family is now saved. You were praying for years, but he gave you a palm branch. He gave you a praise because when he answers, it's amazing. When he answers, it's incredible. Do you know that prayer was meant to be answered? God created prayer for answers. He didn't create prayer so we have a one-way conversation. Prayers are meant to have answers. What makes praying fun is when you get answers. God wants to be able to answer the prayer and he asks you to ask. He said, ask and it will be given. Seek and then you're going to find. Knock and the door's going to open. You see, some people ask once, but there's still some seeking you got to start doing. And then if the seeking didn't work, there's some knocking you got to start doing. You see, Luke 18 says, Jesus looked at all of his disciples and he said, I'm going to tell you this entire chapter so that you would pray and never stop praying. In other words, there are people who understand the moment I pray, something's been released in heaven. But I got to keep praying until it's released on earth. You see, the moment I start agreeing with God, it's released in the spirit. But I got to pray it through. What about Daniel? Remember Daniel? Bible says that he starts to fast and pray. And it says the angel on the 21st day comes to him. And what does he say? He says, Daniel, the moment you started asking... I was sent with the answer. But there was a resistance, Daniel, that was in the spirit realm. I had to fight against something to get to you. But the moment you prayed and agreed with God's will, it was sent. But there's been this resistance. And Daniel, because you didn't stop praying, you have helped me, the Bible says in Psalm 103, that when we pray, the angels are strengthened. When we say the word of God out of our mouths, we literally empower and strengthen the force of the angels to fight on our behalf. So he says, because you understood that the answer was already settled in God's mind, but you didn't stop praying. Can you imagine if he would have given up on the 10th day? Can you imagine he stops praying on the 12th day? The 15th day? What if he waited till the end like the Israelites? In Exodus chapter 32, it says that Moses told him, I'm going up to fast for 40 days. I'm going to go be with God for 40 days on top of the mountain. And it says on the 39th day, read it, Exodus chapter 32, on the 39th day, they built a golden calf and gave up on him. One more day. All they had to do was wait one more day. 
Some of y'all are so close to the breakthrough. I just want you to know, don't give up now. Don't give up now. You got to keep praying. You got to keep your family's almost in the door of the church. They're about to get baptized. This is the year where something's going to happen. But are you going to give up? He says, I want you to take those palm trees. Everybody put your left hand in the air. The palm branches. How many of y'all have something that you're so grateful for? God, you showed up. God, you're thankful. God, I'm so thankful that you healed my son. God, I'm so thankful you saved me from my old life. God, I'm so thankful. But then he says this. Everybody look at me. Praise is about to break out in this place, y'all. He says, I want you to take the willow branches. They're called the weeping willow tree. They're bowed over in weeping. These are the things you don't understand. The times, the losses, the moments that didn't make sense. These are the promises, listen, that still have not come to pass. He says, can you praise me right now with one hand full with the palm tree? But could you also lift up the things you don't understand, but you're choosing to trust God in? The things you don't know, the things you don't understand the outcome, you haven't seen it happen yet, you don't know why you're still going to the doctor when you prayed for healing, you don't know why your kids are still running away from church when you've been raising them in the way they should go, and so when they get older they won't depart from it, you've been quoting every promise, the timing hasn't happened yet, you don't know why, but do you have a willow branch that you can lift up right now? He says, I want you to lift up the palm tree, the promises that have come to pass. And I want you to lift up the willows, the promises you're still waiting on. And I need you to give me a Hosanna right in the middle. <laughs> Abram, I need you to leave, Abram. I need you to leave your house. I need you to leave your home. I need you to leave everything. I got a great future for you, Abram. I got a nation. You're about to be the father. You don't know it yet, but you're going to be a father of many, many nations. Are you going to trust what I say? Are you going to leave everything you know? I know it's going to be hard, Abram. I know it's uncomfortable, Abram. Some of y'all know about the uncomfortability of serving God. Maybe you were a first-generation Christian. Everybody in your family thinks you're part of a cult. You go to the way, dear God. Those people are nuts. I don't know what they're saying. I do know that they're still going to sleep depressed. I do know they're still going to sleep fighting suicidal thoughts. I still know that they're going to sleep needing to be delivered. You've got peace now. You have an opportunity to call on the name of the Lord. Do you know that it's God's promise that your family is saved? No, listen. You, you, gotta, you could just take this lightly, but I'm telling you, listen, the, the idea, God was, God, Jesus did not die on the cross for just individuals. He died on the cross for family units, whole families. Do you remember Noah? The Bible says that Noah was the only man who found grace in God's eyes by himself. It literally says in the Bible, the only man who found grace in God's eyes. But because Noah was that way, he said, listen, I'm going to destroy the earth, but I'm going to let you and your whole family, because of you, come into the boat. You see, when God saves you, you got to understand, when God saves you, it's him getting a territorial hold over the DNA of your house. You're just the first one who came in, but you are the stake in the sand that this is a house now that will serve God. He says, Abram, I need you to leave everything you know. And he says, I want you to go. He has a promise. He's leaving with a promise. He's leaving with confidence. There's going to be trials along the way, but you got a promise. There's going to be things that happen along the way when you want to serve God. But there's, got, there's a promise. I remember, man, first woman. I only dated one girl before my wife. Dear Lord, what a mistake. I was so, see, I had saved myself. I was about 21 years old, 22 years old. I'd never kissed a girl. I'd never held a girl's hand. 
I had saved myself my entire life because I said, the first girl that I'm going to be with, I'm going to marry. I would say, the first girl I'm going to be with, I'm going to marry. I had such a dedication to it. And man, I was like about to prove everybody wrong. It was pride. It was ego. I got with this girl and, and it was great for the first year. And she, I met her in Australia and we were there and it turned real south, real bad. When my dad flew from America and he came to Australia just to meet her. He said, if you think this is the girl, I'm coming out there. I said, come on, Pops, you're going to love her. He sat with her for about 30 minutes, 40 minutes. He had a little thing. You know, he said, okay, bye. I said, I'll see you in a little bit, babe. You know, I just sat with my dad. He looked at me. He said, son, I know you don't want to hear this. I said, don't you dare say what I think you're going to say. Don't you dare. But you got to understand, whatever my dad said, he's been the mentor for my entire life. He hears God. I said, well, what do you think? He said, uh, I'm so sorry. She's so nice. She's not the girl for you. I said, Dad, you missed it. You missed it. God's not talking to you. I'm sorry. So I said, I'm sorry. I said, you need some time. You can go talk to mom on the phone, whatever you want to do. But just know, I mean, she's the girl for me. I wouldn't have done this if she weren't the girl for me. I know God's voice. I know how God would have spoken to me. We end up breaking up for five years. I'm preaching, I'm ministering, I'm traveling, but my heart is completely in total despair and depression. My 20s, ministering, preaching, healing, and getting people, God's healing their hearts, God's healing their bodies, God's doing all this, but my heart is in total despair. Till finally my dad came up one day and he comes over to my house and he says, um, son, we have to talk. You have not been yourself. What are you doing? What are you thinking? What is that? And he's just talking this way. And I said, preach it, dad. Preach it to me. Go ahead. Give me the sermon. <laughs> mocking him. Mocking him. Shame to say this. It's the only time I've ever done this in my life. He said, son, I don't care what you say to me, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Jesus loves you. God has, a, God has a ministry for you that your mom and I have known since you were formed in your mother's womb. And I don't care if you say anything to me. I don't care if you come against. You're not going to miss your potential and your calling. So I'm going to tell you what this is. He says, you have an idol that's in your heart. This girl has been made an idol. She controls your joy. She controls whether you have peace. She's not even talking to you. And she's an idol. Nobody wants to hear that. But the moment he did it, he said this. And son, by your actions, you're telling Jesus he's not enough for you. I fell on my knees. I said, Lord God, please tell me this isn't true. Tell me this isn't true, that I've been saying that to you with my actions. And I felt, you know what I felt? Not the hatred of God. I didn't feel God was upset with me. I felt the overwhelming goodness and love of God. You know what it was? You know, because I'm trying to be vulnerable with you to tell you this. You can be ministering for God, but still have a wall up toward God. You can be doing this Christian walk for him, but still have something that doesn't trust him. You see, I didn't trust God with my spouse. And when my dad came and said those words, I fell on my knees and it was like God came back and said, welcome back, son. I'm here for you. I've been here the whole time. I just repented and through repentance, God healed me. And three months later, I met Ashley Tate, who is now my wife. And we have Maximilian, and we got a new baby coming along. Woo! You see, I don't know what hasn't worked out for you. But you better put that willow tree up in the air and thank him for the doors that shut just as much as the doors that open. Everybody stand to your feet right now. Listen to me. I have to close, but please listen. Hebrews 13 says this. We must offer up the sacrifice of praise. Praise is not easy. Praise is not meant to be in the moments where everything is worked out. Praise is a sacrifice. It only counts when it's hard to do. Listen to me. Everybody from the front to the back, look at me. Praise only counts when it's hard to do. So Abram's on his way and it says he parks and he camps. And he said, Bethel is on his left and Ai is on his right. Two cities. Bethel means this, the place of the house of God. 
the place where the blessings flow that's Bethel that's literally what it means in the Hebrew AI means this the place of destruction the place where your hopes are dashed so Abram literally in front of a future he did not know he did not totally understand what was going to happen he didn't know he was going to be the father of many nations he's just in the middle he's experiencing hardship but he's obeying God he's experiencing what's going on but he's obeying God there's resistance but he's obeying God and right in the middle of what could perfectly be the great outcome he's hoping for and the possibilities of not knowing what's happening he builds an altar and he praises in the middle I have a question for every one of you for just a few minutes could you praise God with me in the middle would you lift your hands up right now I need you to put up the palm branches I need you to put up the palm branches right now in your right hand these are the moments God has answered you these are the things the promises that are already done these are the amazing times that God met you the moment you asked some of y'all didn't even pray it but God met you even before you said it because you're so good I want to praise him for 30 seconds right now for the palm branches come on praise him out loud thank you Lord that I'm in the house of God thank you Lord that I'm here with you right now thank you Jesus my family God come on praise him right now just thank him in your own language right now with you and God there you go Thanksgiving all over this building come on let's open up this atmosphere thank you Jesus for the palms now I want you to put up your other hand every other hand and both hands these are the willows there are promises that every person in this building is still believing for right now there are people that are in your family that are still not here there are family members you have been praying and praying there are bodies that are still sick and you have believed God to heal you listen to me the promise does not change are you going to praise him only when you get it because listen to me praise is not what you do after something happens praise is what you do before you get the victory keep your hands up right now and I want you to praise him right now for the promises that you have not had yet I want you to say your family members names by name right now out loud if they're not in this building I want you to call out your son I want you to call out your daughter. I want you to call out your sister and brother. I want you to put their names into this atmosphere of praise. Because right now, something is being done in the atmosphere. Just one second. Every person, just look at me real quick. Let me tell you why what we're doing is so powerful. I got to tell you this last point. Mark 11, 23 and 22. Jesus is speaking and he says these amazing words to his disciples. He said, if when you pray, you will believe what you are praying, you will have whatever it is you ask for. Please understand, hear this. You got to understand. He says, if when you are praying, don't miss this, you believe that you have it, then it will be given to you. The moment that you have it is not the moment you see it done. The moment you have it is the moment you believed it was done. Did you hear what I just said? This is what's going to separate you right now in Christianity. Many Christians wait until they see it and then they praise him. But what God's saying is if you knew what happened in the spirit, just like Daniel, the moment you agree with God's words over your family, over your body, it is done and you have it. It's just a matter of time until it is worked out. So when you praise God right now, we're going to lift our hands one more time. And we're going to praise God over our family members who are not here yet. Why? Because we need to put a stake in the sand. This is an atmosphere full of believers. When we come together as a congregation, our faith can collide. And as we pray, we're lifting their names up and we're already claiming them and it already will be done. It's gonna be done right now. And listen to me, tonight we're coming bringing their pictures. You're gonna put their pictures all over the stage. We're gonna have your phones, every person, lists of people who aren't saved. You better be here tonight because tonight we're not only gonna pray for them, we're gonna dance over those pictures. Tonight we're gonna jump over those pictures. Tonight we're gonna give them real praise. Every person lift it up. I want you to see their faces right now in your mind. I want you to see your business right now if that's what you're believing for. I need you to see your marriage. 
close your eyes focus on Jesus right now every person praise him up in front of Jesus and you'd be in heaven do not guess if you have this peace do not guess if this is in your heart our whole family is waiting here nobody's leaving because why we care about you as a family we have a hope and a promise you need to have it too the Bible says if you'll not be ashamed of me in front of people I won't be ashamed of you in front of my father in heaven I'm gonna ask you boldly right now I want to have peace with God I want to have peace with God come down right now to the front Right out of your seat. Give them a hand as they come. This is your time. Don't wait any longer. I want to have peace with God. Come on, check yourself. Do you have peace with God? Come from the left, from the right. Thank you. Let them out here. Come on, they're coming up right here. Look at, she's coming up. Give her a hand. Who else? You want peace with God? Come up right now. Look at it. Come up right there, the daughter. We got a mother and a daughter coming up. We got brothers coming up right here. Come on. Come on, bring them right now. You're welcome. This is your home. Come on with somebody right now. Come on, give my hand. Don't stop. This is like your sister. This is like your brother coming up right now. Look at him coming. Look at him coming. Look at him coming. Every one of you guys who are coming up right now. Come on, just give my hand. This is beautiful. Look, they're still coming from that side. Guys, every person, we're about to pray in just a second, but please, every person realize this. You got to be back here at 6 o'clock tonight. We need everybody's faith to break through for our families. When you come together, there is something supernatural about congregational faith. If one is gathered in my name, I can set a thousand. If two are gathered in my name, I'll set 10,000. If three, you see it quantifies. The more of us that are in here, we're going to do it for each other. Do it even if you all your family saved. Why don't you come in and pray that on to everybody else? This is a year of the harvest. Let's all pray this with the people here right now. This is the most beautiful thing we could do in service is give people an opportunity to change their destiny with Jesus. Everyone repeat this prayer with me right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I receive you as Lord. Wash me by your blood. I am saved because you died for me on a cross and you rose from the dead. Lord, be my master. Be my boss. I'm no longer the boss of my own life. You're now the boss of my life. Teach me to be a disciple. Thank you for forgiving me. Say these with me. Thank you for forgiving me. And Lord, I now forgive myself. In Jesus' name, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. I have peace, and I will not doubt this from this point on. Amen. Give them a hand right now for all the amazing brothers and sisters.